Spotty residual shortages linger, but the Colonial Pipeline is back up and running. The question now that ransom has been paid is where is the U.S. government response? We have been talking about this yeah. for like 10 years now, and it's, it's getting worse mm -hmm. and it will continue to get worse until we get on top of it. Ransom money paid to hackers rose 337 percent last year from the previous year, according to Chain Analysis, a company that documents ransomware attacks. The Biden administration has thus far been unresponsive about retaliatory attacks, though evidence often points to state involvement. Russia's involved here. About half of their offensive attack capability that they use in Russia is devoted to criminal activity. The other part is devoted to purely government activity, conducting offensive uh, cyber attacks. The people who are involved in the criminality, by and large, are all the U.S. are all the Russian hackers. They, what Putin permits them to do is moonlight, form their own organizations, and conduct criminal activity. So to, to say that while this took place in Russia, and it's well known that many of the people that would be perpetuating this attack also work for the Russian government full time and do this part time. On May 10th, President Biden offered only vague suggestions that Russia should be held accountable. I'm going to be meeting with President Putin. And uh, so far, there is no evidence based on from our intelligence people that Russia is involved although there is evidence that the actors ransomware is in Russia. They have some responsibility to deal with this. In what was arguably as serious a threat as the Colonial Pipeline attack, in early 2020, hackers broke into the software giant SolarWinds, placing malicious code into that company's software used by 33,000 customers. Again, Russia was behind it. The IT security firm FireEye discovered that malicious code. In late February, its CEO told a congressional committee that the malware was still active. In reality, this is an ongoing saga. The group that did the compromise, that led to a hundred different organizations compromised, and nine government agencies compromised, is not new to the game. This is the special ops rob in the house, not some average criminal just trying to shake the doorknobs or try to crack open the windows. So this was the varsity team on offense and all the signs, all the digital fingerprints that our company cataloged proves that, that this was a foreign intelligence service. While private sector companies are frequently the target, state and local governments are often easier prey as in last week's hack of the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. Ransomware attackers publicly posted sensitive police files last week after the department refused to pay a full $4 million in ransom, offering only $100,000. And if there's one thing I consistently find today, it's that many of the public sector uh, computers and information systems, software, especially at the state and local level, are not as modern as they should be. Even as critical an infrastructure as Colonial Pipeline was, at the time of the attack, it was running a classified ad on its website for an IT specialist to, quote, manage a team of security experts to address potential threats. We have the best offensive cyber capability in the world. But our defense is not what it should be. And there's also financing, banking, telecommunications, air and rail transportation, all quite vulnerable. Finance and banking is probably the best protected of all of the private critical infrastructure. But we need a public-private partnership to get this done. And yes, the infrastructure bill that's being proposed should be re-examined to make certain that we're hardening our critical infrastructure. Though, as Keen says, the U.S. does have the greatest cyber offensive capability in the world, neither our vulnerable citizens nor our opportunistic adversaries have seen it demonstrated. Many are wondering if in the interest of national security, it's time it started being put to use. Doug McKelway for The Washington Examiner.